Hi, my name is Danny Chu, and I'm the owner of this little Vietnamese restaurant in the heart of a Chinatown. It's called Selua. I actually have owned this restaurant about 10 years now, but I've been in the restaurant business for near three decades. Selua stands for, actually it's called Chu Chu Train, because it's considerably, it's a fast food in Vietnam, but our terminology in fast food is not exactly like American fast food. It actually takes hours, literally days, to prepare most of our food before we actually serve. But when the customers start to order, we can actually crank them out rather quickly. Pho is a very common thing that Vietnamese people love to eat. Now it's spread out all over the Western country because after the Vietnamese war back in 1975 ended, and a lot of uh, Vietnamese start to uh, flee and escape, and we turn out to be a refugee, and how, that's how we end up in the United States, in New York. I'm personally from the South, so these tastes are coming from the South Vietnam. Commonly served in the United States are mostly the South Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> this is the best one. It's the best one? <laughs> Alright, yeah. we'll take his word for it. <laughs> it's highly recommended by Michelin Guy for five years in a row. You can't go wrong. Here are the ingredients that we use for our uh, standard fur. These are the star anuses, seed and these are the dry clover. And these are the ginger. We actually have to roast the ginger to bring out the maximum flavor of it. And you know what this is, cinnamon. And these are red charlotte. This is beef. We call them eye round. Sometimes people mistaking it, thought it's some kind of eye, but it's not. They almost from opaque to become almost translucent. That's amazing. And that's what makes the beef so delicious. And this is brisket. You can see the meat is actually carry a little membranes and a little fat, uh, but they're not really fatty. That's what makes it so smooth. And this is tendon. In Asian, we consider this as a very high vitamin for glucosamine. And this is tripe. In a simple term, mean cow stomach. They have two types. They have honeycomb type, they have tripe. Some people actually serve a honeycomb type. Not common. This type uh, is more preferred for fur. And this is beef ball. And of course, when we serve inside the bowl, you always see this condiment uh, come with it because the basil, this is called saw cilantro. Uh, the reason they call cilant uh, saw because of the saw etchy. And this bean sprout, jalapeno. As you can see, this is it's like a 50 gallon, literally 50 gallon. And it takes a lot of passion to cook. It's not something that you just throw the bones and the meat inside the soup and let it boil until you forgot about it. No, you have to constantly check on it and skimming it off all the unnecessary substance. The whole process of making this soup is literally seven hours. It's a constantly rotating. Let's say in the afternoon, we will make the pot ready for tomorrow morning. And the one that we made in this morning, we're ready for this afternoon. But the one that we're serving right now is actually was already cooked since last night. That's the brisket. And as you can see, this brisket's been only in there for like half an hour or so. Oh, the brisket will take at least two to three hours. If you cook them in a very small piece, you actually bring out all the nutrition inside the beef. You're not really cooking it anymore. You're actually burning it. The bones are sitting on the bottom. And uh, it's the bone marrow is from the shin, from the cow shin. You can see it like all these. Wow. Yeah. All of these little things in it, that's what makes the soup taste so delicious. We use up more than two or 300 pounds of bone every day. We can literally serve more than 500 bowl of fur every day. About 35 years ago, when we first came, my father struggled to make a living and he actually entered into a, uh, a meat market. He'd been located on this Mulberry Street for more than 20 years and he have a butcher shop operate out of a basement right, right next door to our restaurant. 
he been supply meat uh, to all uh, the Asian restaurant in Chinatown. I mean, most of them, most of the Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, Thailand. Because of the right type of meat that we use, it make our fur perfectly prepared. This is a traditional ingredient that we use in the fur, okay? It's called dry sau ko. It's just the right combination. It's almost like Chinese medicine in a way. Yeah. Many of the Asian cookings are influenced by the Chinese medicine. This is coming from hundreds or thousands of years of experience. Now, after that stage, it's not over after the seven hour. We're gonna have to transfer that over to this side. As you can see, this one is really much lower, lower temperature to keep it boiling. And this one is actually, it may look like it's sitting, but it's actually being cooking because of the layer of this fat sitting on top, preventing the soup from going crazy. And this is one of our chefs. His name is Thai, and he's, he's my number one uh, for chef. And me? Uh, they're Thai wine. So this one, we call them pho Thai, which is just medium rare beef, okay? Well, right now it's raw, but once you put in the soup, I want to show you, okay? He doesn't apply the soup directly onto the beef. He applied the soup along the sides of the beef. So that's how we preserve the beef still remain medium rare, rather than overcook the beef. Temperature is an extremely crucial, important issue in terms of making a soup. So that one serving is beef pho. This is called beef pho thai, which is medium rare beef. And this is well done beef, we call them, which is brisket. This is what they call pho, P-H-O, okay? The name sounds funny, but it's delicious. What it is, is a rice uh, noodle. Before we serve, we're gonna go through a half bath of water. You may think they are all the same, just like one brand to another, but it's absolutely not. Because making this fur, this fur I actually made in Vietnam. And we are very particular. We have to choose the right ones. Everything has to be perfect. And if it's not, we'll reject that. <laughs> And then this is called the house special noodle soup. You see the tendon, the raw beef, the tripe, the beef ball, and the brisket. Everything's in it. Okay, here we are. First of all, smell them. If you can tell if you have the right aroma because of the right ingredients are being used. Okay? And as you can see, we like, we prefer our beef, medium rare or e even rare as possible. Most of the Vietnamese people would love to eat, put all these like bean sprout, basil, saw cilantro, lime, and jalapeno into the soup. And that is all you need because the fur itself is so flavorful. You don't really need any other type of sauce. Some people like to use a little sauce, saucer, a little dish, and then they add a oh, lot of this garlic chili sauce, sriracha sauce, and this is the hoisin sauce. And people like to dip their beef in it, like that, okay? However, I am a different eater because I rather taste the true taste of my food. So I don't want to depend on any type of, other type of sauce that will overkill. I'm gonna take a little bit of the fur, combine them. Okay, and you want to pick up a little soup, just like that. We put a lot of tension and our passion on our food when it comes to cooking. To make an excellent one, it takes lots of this. <laughs>